Hey, what's up everyone? I'm just gonna bring up the live stream on my computer. So say hi to me in there. Let me know where you're from. Where are you watching this from? I always love to hear that creak. I always love to hear where you guys are from. Um, it always blows me away how many countries we have represented um, in the comments. So I just gotta find my live stream. There it is. Thank you, YouTube. I really appreciate that. Did I turn the volume off? I'm about to find out. All right, what's up everyone? Denmark, Kenya already. All right, we got Johnny, we got uh, Ramza. If I mispronounce your name, so sorry. David, we got, oh wow, that's moving fast. Uh, we got someone from Germany, Elvers. Nick from Ghana. Uh, is it Arush from the United States? Uh, we got Canada, we got another Canada. All right, guys, awesome. You know, I always love uh, Japan, Japan, really. That's crazy. Hey, what's up? Omicron planet. <laughs> hey, England, France, Florida, Canada fam. You got Canada fam here. Uh, America, Saudi Arabia. All right, awesome guys. Thank you for tuning in. As you know, we do these live streams typically on uh, Friday, 7 or 5 p.m. Like, we haven't really nailed down a time slot, have we? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to answer some of your questions from Instagram. I've got them all right here and then we're going to answer some of your questions from in there and there's actually a couple of things i want to go over too that um i just thought of today um that i think could help a lot of you so i'm going to be going we got mexico congo denmark oh man what's up hey smiley kid i love i'm, I'm one of your biggest fans that's awesome oh and everyone by the way man city signed bernardo silva so there's that for 43 million pounds how about that all right guys so Let's get right into it. I'm gonna answer your questions in here. There's a topic I want to go over in here as well. Then we will get to your questions in the comments as we typically do. And let's see, how, how are we doing here? All right, cool. So obviously the title of this is which pro do I learn from the most? And I actually, since I think most people are here, I wanna cover this first um, because it's, um, you know, it's a very important question. I think one of the best ways to learn and to get better is to watch the players at the highest level. So, you know, the Ronaldo's, the Messi's, players of the past, like the Zidane's and the Maradona's and whoever. Um, I'm gonna tell you who I love watch, or who I used to love watching play when I was younger and who I now like love to watch play as well. So, yes, Suarez and Messi, that will be some of my answers, but uh, there, there's more than just them. Hold on, don't, don't assume too much. So when I was actually younger, um, so I, Messi wasn't playing when I was younger, by the way. So when I was like a kid, so we'll say seven, eight, nine, ten, in then teenage years, um, one of the players I actually loved to watch a lot was Zinedine Zidane. He was one of my favorite players to watch because I just thought he was incredibly graceful on the ball. And what Zidane actually taught me personally, he came up to me and was like, "Yo, dude, this is uh, you gotta learn this." Now, through watching him, I learned that ball control is, and your control over the ball is one of the most important skills in this sport. I mean, Zidane was never typically that fast. You know, he would get caught up all the time, but the way he would protect the ball and move the ball and how intelligent he was on the ball, it didn't really matter that he wasn't the quickest player around. In fact, if he was one of the quickest players around, he'd probably have gone down as one of the best ever. I mean, he has gone down as one of the best ever, but imagine Zinedine Zidane with like, Pele level speed or like, I don't know, who's really fast? Like a Theo Walcott or Ronaldo, either Brazilian or Portuguese Ronaldo level speed. He would have been unstoppable. But what I loved about him was that his control was insane. And one of the reasons I always recommend um, learning ball control as much as you can, I don't care how good your control is now, to keep hammering away, away at making your ball control and protecting the ball very, very good is because when you get really good at that, you become almost untouchable. Just watch some clips of Zidane. Watch a compilation. Ronaldinho as well was really good. Ronaldinho is another example of a player whose touch was just phenomenal, incredible. Some of the things he would do with the ball were phenomenal. Uh, he also had the speed too. But Zidane would have that ability to do whatever he wanted with the ball, whether it was simple, whether it was audacious, it didn't matter. And it's one of the reasons that I um, always recommend ball control being one of those main skills that you work on. So that was when I was a kid. I also learned a lot from Steven Gerrard. He was one of my heroes when I was growing up. Um, I loved how just how 
in the game he would get, how determined he was, how much drive he had. You know, it's not only the physicals you want to look at, but I mean, he had the physicals as well. He would tackle really well. He'd pass really well. He would score goals. He would be able to shoot really well. He could see passes that other players couldn't. He was another player I really learned from. I really um, learned a lot from his drive and determination and how much he would work, how hard he worked. So he was another player I really learned from. So when it comes to today, what players do I learn from the most? Obviously, I watch players like Messi and Ronaldo when I can because, I mean, watching Messi is mesmerizing. The only thing that's really difficult about watching Messi is it's really, really hard to envision myself doing what he's doing, but that doesn't mean I still can't learn from him, moves, certain things, movement. Same with Ronaldo. I mean, one of the things I really have learned from Ronaldo is the importance of movement. Like everyone says, oh, he scores a million tap-ins. Yeah, but how did he get into that position? One, he doesn't score a million tap-ins, but how did he get into that position to actually have a tap-in? His movement is insane. There's a reason. He's like, okay, what's the easiest way I can score? Oh, if I'm right in front of goal, I'm gonna freaking bamboozle the defender with my movement, get into that space and score. And then he'll score to you know, crazy goals as well. You know, So I, I never like it when play, um, people say, you know, he only scores tap-ins or all this. Well, then you go and score that many tap-ins. There's a reason he scores a ton of goals like that, because he puts himself in those situations. So that's one thing to learn from him. Messi, obviously. Um, a player like someone men uh, mentioned, I really... Um, um, oh, I just forgot it. Suarez. Suarez is a player that I learned a lot from. Um, one thing I learned from Suarez is... Again, he has that battling, like kind of warrior mentality. He chases people down. He closes from the front. If his skill move doesn't work, he doesn't give up and throw his hands up. He battles away until he gets the ball back. He's like a bulldog. He just never stops. Um, and he's also incredibly skillful and one of the best players in the world. So that helps as well. I'll tell you one player I've been watching a lot of recently is Harry Kane. Um, because I'm a striker myself, I have a similar build to him. Um, and, you know, I never really appreciated Harry Kane as much as I, um, as I do now. I did in the past because I used to just think he was like a poacher type player. But this guy's everywhere. If you watch like an actual game, he, he can post up, he can spin, he can turn. He's got some moves on him. He's able to play in his teammates. You can play off him. You can play him in the space. He's quickly becoming this complete forward. And it's that two years in a row he's won the Premier League Golden Boot. So he's another player I'll learn off. So as far as... The point I'm trying to get to here is you want to be watching these high-level people. Now, what I like to do, um, as you can tell with the Harry Kane example and the Luis Suarez example, is I play as a striker. So I like to watch players when I'm really specifically watching and trying to learn from them. Like I was watching a Harry Kane video the other day and I was like taking mental notes of the things he was doing so that I could apply it to my own game. When you're watching players like compilation videos on YouTube or you're watching like verses like blah, blah, blah versus Arsenal, whatever, individual match highlights, right? Pick players who are specific to your position, right? Who, by watching them, you will learn more about your position and things you can improve on in your position. For example, if you're a defender, you know, it might be fun watching a ton of Neymar videos, but it would be more beneficial to watch some Mats Hummels, some Boateng, um, some Vincent Company videos, right? If you're a center back. Um, if you are a striker, you know, watching Lewandowski, if you're a smaller uh, striker, who's a, who's a nice, good small striker, maybe a Sanchez or an Insigna who's doing, is, I don't think that's pronounced right, but he's also another really good player. You can watch a Messi, yes, of course. Um, yeah, if you're, that's a good example. Alonso and Moses, if you are a wing back or right back, left back type player, they've had a great season of showing what a good wing back should be doing, attacking and defending. So when you're choosing players to kind of emulate off of, don't always pick the typical Messi Ronaldo. You know, think of players who you can learn from that you can watch and it would benefit you in your position. So like if you're a right back, um, who's like a Danny Alves, for example. Um, if you're a center defensive mid, a Conte, I mean, who better to learn from than the player who is just taking the world by storm. Sergio Busquets is good as well. If you're a deep line playmaker, take a look at some old Xabi Alonso clips or Pirlo. Um, the point is, different people are going to um, go, actually Zlatan Ibrahimovic is a player I learn a lot off as well. Just, but he's such a unique player, it's hard to emulate my game off him. Um, but watch players 
in your position and learn from those players. Don't always go for like the typical one because yes, we want to be doing the cool moves like Neymar and the cool, you know, whatever. You know, we would love to slalom through four players like Messi. I'm not even saying don't go in that route. But for me, it's much more beneficial for me to emulate a game off Harry Kane because he keeps it simple. He does good hold up play. He has a lot of the same attributes and physicality. Um, I mean, I'm nowhere near his level. I'm not, don't even think I'm trying to claim that. But <laughs> But it's good to learn off someone who's similar in a certain way. So pick whatever your position is. Try and learn from a really good player in that position. Watch them. Study them. What do they do in this situation and that situation? Okay. So that's enough um, about that. Coutinho. Yeah, if you're, if you're a small um, attacking midfield type player, Isco, Coutinho, uh, Thiago, like he's suggesting, a great Dybala is actually one of my favorite players right now. All right, football lovers, you got it. Just shot. There you go. I just you like I just saw that as it goes through. Um, Patty P asks, Kane shoots a lot. Is that good or wasteful? I I love it. Kane is the top goal scorer in the Premier League. You have to shoot to score. And the thing about Harry Kane shooting is he's really good at shooting. I watched a highlight video of him of his overall season last season, and this dude can hit a ball. And, he, and I saw an interview with him, too, saying that he does it strategically. He doesn't go for the upper corners. He goes for the lower corners because he knows it gives him more a chance of scoring and getting rebounds. I don't mind a striker shooting a lot um, so long as he's not being really stupid about it. So, no, I don't think that's wasteful. I think that's made him better. I think that's made him a great player. Lukaku's, Lukaku is another great player. Um... I think he's got, like, he needs to just go up one more gear. He seems to get lost in certain games where I think Harry Kane is much more consistent, but Lukaku, again, is still young. I think they're the same age, maybe a year off. Um, he's going to be he's gonna be a formidable player for years to come. I think he's, he's up there now to the point where he'll be fighting so long as he stays injury-free for the top goal scorer. And Chelsea might buy him back, so that would be cool too. Okay, so i got I got to move on to the next question because I've been... I've been gushing about this one. But yeah, essentially, pick a player in your position who's really, really freaking similar to you. Um, so, for example, I wouldn't pick Dybala to play like because I just I don't have the same build, the same quickness as him. But, you know, mirroring Lewandowski, for example, would be a little better because it's my build. Um, and I find that there's a lot of similarities. Same with Harry Kane. Okay, so next question is from a, be a underscore beautiful underscore game. And he says, okay, this is a good question. I've answered it before, but I'll answer it pretty quickly. Um, is, in practice, I can do so many skill moves, but in games, I can't do all that. Why? So I'm guessing why is what you're asking. Confidence. It's all about confidence, man. You know, if you can do it in practice, if you're a practice player who can beat, you know, you, you do so well in practice with your teams, uh, with your team, I don't know how many teams you play for, but with your team, you do so well in practice, you're zigzagging through, you're scoring great goals, but you can't do it in matches, it's because you're probably putting way too much pressure on yourself in those matches, and you're just getting nervous. So a great video to watch I have is, is simply, um, it's like how to calm your nerves and relax in soccer. That goes over some stuff. There's some visualization videos that can help you with that. I also have a video that's called how to get good at soccer, how to, something like that. Um, if you, when this live stream is over, comment on the live stream in the video, not the live chat, but in the actual video once it's posted of the live stream. Tell me like that you need the video about um, why you can't do skill moves in games, and I will link you to that video. Okay. Here we go. On to the next question. This one's a really good one, and this one's. Um, I'll, I'll answer this real quick. What do I think about Griezmann going to Man United? Um, I don't like it simply because I'm a Liverpool supporter and Griezmann is a class player. Um, you know, Man United eventually, you know, they, they keep acquiring these really good players. It's going to click for them eventually. And if they're bringing in the Griezmanns, they've gotten Pogba, Herrera had a great season. They have Rashford up and coming. I actually really rate Lingard as well. It's going to click. The Premier League is very competitive right now, but... Griezmann's one of those players who I don't think will have much trouble adapting to the Premier League because he's quick, he's physical, he's kind of like scrappy, meaning he doesn't give up easy. He reminds me of Luis Suarez to a certain extent, um, but I don't think he'll have any issue in the Premier League. And it's, you know, it's kind of like him and Ra I don't know if they'll play two up front. I don't know, I don't know if Mourinho, usually, he doesn't usually play like that. Um, but that's going to be scary if he plays for Man United, especially with uh, a Pogba 
in form and a Herrera coming back in the same form and whoever else they bring in. I know they, they've been linked with a few other players. So um, I don't like it because it's going to make them better. But, you know, from a Man United perspective, woohoo, you're probably excited. I would be. Okay, so here's the next question. Two Guns Boxing asks, um, can you offer some guidance to parents? Um, and I'll answer that Ika Kisia's question in a moment. Um, and it's, can you offer some guidance to parents of young players? My son is age eight, um, plays on where he's one of the weakest players in the team, doesn't get much playing time. How can I improve him? During the off season, he currently trains with his team twice a week, and he uh, recently started playing futsal once a week. Should he be doing more? If yes, what else can we do? A great question. So eight years old is a really great time. One, make sure he's having fun with it, because I think one of the things we move away from when we're getting really serious about football is is not allowing kids to have fun. Um, yes, you want them to. You want to be, be making sure they're having fun while doing the right things. Now you're kind of on the right track. The more he plays. At this important part of like his development, the better it's going to be. The more the futsal is going to be great. Actually, keep him in futsal. One reason that South American players are so freaking skilled is because so many of them either play on the streets when they're younger, or they play futsal. You know, players like Ronaldinho, Kaká, I think played futsal. Coutinho, some of the like the best and most skillful players. I mean, just by saying Ronaldinho should be enough proof. Play futsal. It's such a quick game. It requires so much skill, quick touches. So I definitely think keep him in futsal. And I would say, you know, yeah, let him play as long as, you know, his he's not getting tired or he's it's not too like rigorous on him. Let him play as much as he can. As far as individual training goes, you know, get out with him and kick the ball around with him a lot. Make sure you focus on the fundamentals. Um, things like ball control and dribbling because these are things that will always apply to his game Like ball control is going to be just as important as when he's 16 as when he's in his 20s um, So work on those fundamentals especially but yeah get him playing get him having fun Futsal is a great idea and really focus on those fundamentals um, And if you really want to really get into it, um, you can buy like a program that's gonna um, I don't know if there are programs Specifically for his age, but I'm sure they're kicking around somewhere on the internet so finding a program that is proven to help younger kids get better faster is always a good way to go instead of just winging it, you know? Okay, so let's get into the next one. And the next one is from Skill Robin. What do you think about trying new... Okay, I like this question. What do you think about trying new positions like a midfielder playing as a winger one game? Uh, Cruyff said defenders should play as attackers and attackers as defenders, or should you just stick with your midfield role or the role that you're supposed to be doing. So this is a good question because um, the game progresses and adapts and evolves over time. Now when Cruyff was playing, the Ajax system was, they invented a system called Total Football, where it's really actually really cool. And I think Barcelona did something similar either when, Cru was Cruyff manager? I think he was, when he was there. Uh, but essentially what it was is basically all the positions were like fluid. Meaning a defender could at some point in time find himself in the attack, an attacker could find himself on defense, so it was essential that all the players could play in those positions. And it's a really cool concept, it worked really well back in Croy's time, and I really like it, but I don't think it has a place in today's game. Simply because in today's game, players are much more positionally focused. They're much more focused on certain aspects, that if you started focusing on too much at once, you wouldn't be improving as much as you need to in the area that you're competing with with other players, if that makes sense. So if you're Harry Kane, it's useless to have Harry Kane working on like what a right back or a center back would be working on because that time would be better used working on his finishing, his movement, taking players on one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I'm not saying defensive ability wouldn't benefit him, and he is real, a really good player to defense from the front, but it comes down to like a time management thing. And back in those days, I don't think the training was as rigorous and hard as regimented. Sports science wasn't as far along. So to play in different positions, it wasn't as unreasonable or unrealistic. Whereas today, you don't want your striker playing center back. He doesn't know all the tactical stuff, stuff either. You could try and teach all the players this, but again, it takes away from focusing on their thing. However, you know, it would be really cool if that was still a thing today because total football, like I've seen clips of it being played, it's, it's freaking awesome. Like it looks really, really cool. Um, but I would say no. I would say in today's day and age, where the game is at right now, you really, really want to focus on your strengths in your area. 
but just because you know if you're focusing on too much at once you'll improve a little bit in each area but you won't improve as much as you need to on the areas that are relevant um, to your position if that makes sense okay all right gotta adjust there get a little uncomfortable it's not the comfy chair as you can see this time it's a nice little wooden chair okay so I have two more questions on here I have one thing I want to go over um, I'm going to answer your questions. I have a couple announcements at the end, and then we will uh, get on out of here. But we've got, don't worry, we, we've got plenty of time. Just checking all this. So, eager to see us to Liverpool. Thanks for reminding me. Um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think Mignolet has deserved the chance for another season. I think Carrius is up and coming. If I bring him in, if anything, if he's available and it's, it makes sense financially, bring him in because he'll be for free, right? Then bring him in. Because if anything, it's gonna light a fire under Mignolet and Carius' ass when a World Cup and European champion and Champions League and span it like every trophy under the sun in Spain winner is right there on the bench looking at you going, you make one mistake and I'm coming in, right? You that's that's gonna make them play better. Um, one of the things that made Mignolet play better is when Carius was number one, and Mignolet was like, oh crap. I actually need to work my ass off and stay number one because this kid will come in and take my number one spot. Imagine if Iker Casillas then walks through the door and you're Mignolet and Carrius. You go, oh crap. Again, I better work my ass off to make sure that this legend doesn't take my number one spot. So even just for that, like if he plays like a bit part and kind of coaches Mignolet and whatever, because he's how old now? Is he like 35-ish? I don't know how old he is. Um, but if it's for that reason, I would be fine with it. And who knows, maybe it will be like a check kind of thing where he comes in and actually claims the number one spot. I really don't care so long as our goalie, so long as our freaking goalie for a season can be super solid, not make that many mistakes, and actually not lose us games like Mignolet and Carius did in the past. Although to be fair, Mignolet had a pretty good season. I, um, he, he really actually, especially towards the end, made some fantastic saves. He's become more aggressive in the box, which is something that he lacked. But towards the end, they've definitely been working on that because he's so aggressive in the box now. He's coming out, he's punching, he's claiming, he's not as scared. So, yeah, bring him in, see what happens. I, I mean, that would just be, if anything, cool to have his presence around. I mean, we've seen with James Milner the influence a winner in the dressing room can bring. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So, next, okay, two more questions. So, JanVG.08 says, doing a 30-day challenge while practice each day one at a time. We're doing a 15, okay, yeah. So, basically, he's asking or she's asking, I don't know, um, should they do a 30-day challenge where they do the practice every day, like a 30-day challenge, or would it be more beneficial to do a 15-day challenge but do two practices a day? Okay. Um, here is the deal with 30 day challenges. You're, you're overthinking this. A 30 day challenge is not like a, a magic pill that's going to make you amazing. A 30 day challenge is the, the idea of a 30 day challenge is to give you a taste of what consistency, momentum and improvement feels like 30 days of doing something will yield improvement. So long as you're challenging yourself as so long as you're, you know, you're not going through the motions and all that and you're sticking with it and you're not missing days, but it's not gonna take you from here to like here, like off the screen, like it's not gonna do that. But what it's going to show you is that through being consistent, through building momentum, through sticking with something, you will start to get results. My goal is that if you do a 30 day challenge, that by the end of the 30 day challenge, you are convinced enough to keep going. Because at the end of the 30 day challenge, if you just stop practicing, you kind of negate all of the things you've been doing, right? So. It's not about doing just 15 days. It's not about doing just 30 days. It's about teaching you what consistency, momentum, and hard work can do and in a short amount of time. So you keep going from 30 days. You don't do 30 days of practice and then the 30 days are up and you go, oh, I'm awesome. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, 30 days, I'm, I'm good. No, because the thing is by 30 days, you're getting a taste of that improvement, of that momentum, and you're going to want more. So don't think about it like that. Just keep going. If you want to do two a days of the practices for 30 days, do that. I just say do it once a day because I don't want you to bite off more than you can chew. Okay. Um, there's a 100-day challenge. If you're talking about train effective, then yes, he's doing, uh, wait, no, he's doing, 
he's trying to get a pro contract in 100 days. So it's a little, his is a little bit different than what I'm talking about, but yeah. Okay. Uh, what if Alexi Sanchez goes to Bayern Munich, um, even though he said he wanted to stay in the Premier League, um, then he goes to Bayern Munich? I don't know. I would prefer, unless he wants to come to Liverpool, I would prefer him to go somewhere. Actually, you know what? I, I, I want him in the Premier League. He's too good a player. It makes it more fun to have good players in the league. So I would prefer he either stay with Arsenal. If someone like Chelsea bought him, that would be interesting. Um, I know like Man City's interested in him, and I think I heard Chelsea's interested in him. And there's no Champions League football for Arsenal, so it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Where's Ozil gonna be? Where's where's Sanchez gonna be? Who knows? Um, honestly, I hope they stay at Arsenal just because that'll keep the league strong, and Arsenal will be back in contention. But I will totally I I get it if they move. I mean they've been there a while. These are world class players, both of them, who are used to winning things. One at Barcelona, one at Real Madrid. So, if they do, I, I don't blame them, honestly. If I was an Arsenal fan, I wouldn't think that. And if they were at Liverpool and they left, I wouldn't think that. But from a neutral perspective, I get it. Okay, so, Jaffa underscore eight. Do you have any game day routines? Hashtag Simply Soccer. So, no, I don't have anything too strict. I'll usually like plan the day before a game to be very light and it'll be just essentially a rest day. You know, I might do like some yoga. I won't do any exercise or anything. I do not, unless I want to go for like a jog or something that just to get my blood pumping because I'm sore, maybe I'll do that, but nothing more than that. I'll make sure I eat healthy. I'll make sure I'm resting and I'm not doing anything too strenuous. You know, there's not, you know, you don't really want to be doing too much before the game. Uh, or the day before the game. That's what said game day, right? Oh, and on the game day. Okay, well, if it's on the game day, same thing. I won't do anything too strenuous. I'll probably do some, like, visualization stuff. Actually, a lot of the time I do visualization techniques um, the day before and the day of the game. Um, but outside of that, um, I don't do too much. You know, I just try and relax. I take it easy. Um, I don't do anything strenuous. I make sure I eat healthy. I don't eat too close to the game. Also, by the way, I don't usually eat that much the day of the game. A lot of my games are in the morning, so I usually won't even really have that much of a breakfast, which may sound counterintuitive, but I don't. Um, and usually that works out for me. So others might have different ones, but that's my... Um... <laughs> Sorry, I just, saw... <laughs> I just saw one of those questions that was ridiculous. All right, so how about this? Let's answer... <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know who you are. So let's, let's answer T. Steph. Um, let's um, answer some of your questions in there. I will not be answering T. Steph's question. I don't know how that got even through. And I will then go over something I want to go over here, which is essentially a thing I think um, I just need to mention. And then we'll go from there. So the best way to have me see your question is go at Simply Soccer or hashtag Simply Soccer or something. So that I can answer your question. So, Kato Williams, how to become an effective right winger. Go on the channel and search um, how to be a winger or effective winger. If you go on the channel, there should be like a magnifying glass, a search toolbar thing. Look up wingers and there's a bunch of videos on how to be an effective winger. Okay, so, oh, good question. Nick, um, is it Dadris? Dadris? I'm so bad with names, guys. Um, how do you think I can make soccer more fun for myself? I'm 14, I play club soccer, it's really hard on me. Um, this is actually a video I was going to make recently because I'm like, I, I'm finding a lot of how you make something fun is coming up from here. So this is going to sound very, very strange, but try it. Whenever I'm not having fun or I'm not focused, I will say something like, bring the joy, bring the excitement, bring the energy in my head. And it will actually snap something in my head that will make things more enjoyable. I'll start having more fun. Like if I'm just doing a boring routine that I've done a million times, I will kind of snap myself out of it. I'm like, dude, get pumped, get excited. In my head, I'm like, bring the excitement, bring the joy, it's up to you. And in a weird way that actually helps me bring it. I bring more energy, I have more fun. So that's like a simple way to do it. There are other ways to make it more fun, but usually the reason you're not having that much fun with it is because you're, you're kind of getting in your own way. So try and just get out of your way, get excited, tell yourself to get excited, get up in your head and be like, bring the joy, bring the fun, bring the excitement. And you can tell in my voice right now, just from saying it, I'm getting a little more jazzed up. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it. Um, yeah, two guns boxing, I actually did. 
Um, so when um, it was one of the first questions I answered. So I don't know what minute it was, but if you when the live stream is posted, if you just go back or just watch that, it's like within the first ten minutes, I think. Um, so yeah, it'll it'll be on there. I did answer your question. So let's see, what should I do to make my high school team? A Mo, I have a a few videos. I have a video on how to make your high school team actually, and I have a video called How to Stand Out at Soccer Tryouts. Watch the most recent one. It'll give you a bunch of ideas on how to um, play your best at your tryout. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here's a good question from MessyTube. He says, or she says, I don't know any of your genders. How do I stop trying to use difficult skills against defenders and start using basic, more effective moves? I mess them up a lot. Which moves can I do that won't mess up? Um, okay, so again, this is more of like a mental thing. Like, wait, let me, wait, what? Hold on. How do I stop trying to use difficult skills? Okay. So the main thing when you're, the main thing is what are you used to using? So like one of the things I found tripped me up when I was using moves that weren't as effective when I was younger and I started getting into more of a pattern of using effective moves is I was focused in practice of doing cool things, like cool tricks and cool moves. And there's a place for that. Like still when I practice, I'll freestyle sometimes for like five minutes just for fun. But my actual deliberate practice when I'm doing moves will be on the moves I know are effective. So. Um, there's definitely a video I did on this. There's so a video I did on this, but I can't remember the name. So if you go through the videos, I'm pretty sure there's a video that goes over effective moves or best used moves to use in a game. Um, but essentially you want to practice these moves over and over and over and you want to make them a part of you. You want to make them muscle memory. So for example, if you want step overs, you got to be practicing all the time. The step over is probably my go-to move when running at someone and it works so much because I practice it all the time. I still practice at it. I'm already good at it, but I still practice at it. You get that? Even if you're good at something, it doesn't mean you stop working at it. You try and improve it even 1% more. Okay? The body feint's another good, another good one. The Cruyff is one I use a lot. The La Croqueta is a really good one. Essentially, just learn what the effective moves are. Have at least three, is the, is the magic number for me, three really good effective moves that you've worked on and practiced um, over to the point where you can use them automatically. If you have to think about them too much, that probably means you need to practice about them. Now that could also mean you're getting up in your head. So I do have a video called The Mental Side of 1v1. And I think that's the actual title. So take a look at that video if you think it's the mental side that's kind of tripping you up. And that will give you some tips on like kind of the mindset you want to have when taking someone one-on-one. -on -one. Because you could be the most skillful player ever who can do moves perfectly. But if the mental side isn't there, you're feeling nervous, you're not confident in your ability to do the moves, then it really doesn't matter how good at the moves you are because you're not going to be able to show it. If that makes sense. Okay, so take a look at some of those videos. Definitely take a look at the mental side of 1v1 and just keep working on it. Start with three moves, three effective moves. My three are the step over, the body feint, and the croif. You can choose three different ones. Just make sure they're three effective ones. Got it. All right, so. Um, Sam uh, Sali. God, why am I so bad with names? Sali. Sam Sali. We're going with that. How do I transition from a team that plays good soccer to a team that mainly just kicks the ball, club to high school? Oh, good question. I like that. All right, cool. I was, I was trying to think what you meant, but I'm assuming you're saying you're coming from a club team, which is like organized, really good, hand-picked players who are all really good, work as a team, all very skillful, to a school team, which is not always as selected. It's just kids in the area. It's made very random, and it's not as good. It's actually really cool you bring it up because my high, I had a very similar situation. My club team was really, really good. We were ranked. We would you know, play nationally ranked teams. All the players on the team were like selected, hand-picked players. I mean, the reason I got on the team is because the coach saw me playing and came up to me after my game. So it was only good players. So you know, playing with them and then playing with my high school, who I loved the coaches at my high school, um, and there were some years we were pretty good, but sometimes we were not. Um, the biggest thing I would say is if you're going to play for both, what I did is I just tried to keep improving as much as I possibly could, even though the play wasn't so great. So I used it as an opportunity to work on parts of my game. So I remember in high school, for example, senior year, we didn't have the best of teams. Um, a lot of the burden of scoring the goals was on me. Uh, we didn't score that many, and I scored the bulk of them, so it actually helped me with my goal scoring, my ability to beat people one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes you just have to make the best of a situation, so do the best that you can. 
you know, take on some new responsibilities. I would, for example, in high school, try and take on more players than I would in club, just because of the level it was at and because of the players I was surrounded with. And that's not to insult those players. There was just a difference between the players I played club with and the players I played high school with later on in high school, because I did play with some really good players in high school at different parts. But I would just say you got to make the most of it. So think of things you can look to improve on in your high school games that maybe you wouldn't be able to do in your club games, right? Are you able to dribble a little bit more? Take a few more people on. Can you take more shots because you're one of the better players and it's okay for you to take more shots, for example. So that's basically what I did. Um, and then just, of course, I mean, it gets frustrating. I mean, I can tell you we only won two games my senior year of high school while on the flip side, my club team won like five or six tournaments that summer. So it's going from like a really successful team to a team that can barely win a game. I know that's very frustrating, but just try and make the most of it. Try and keep improving yourself as much as you can during that period. So work as hard as you can. And if the results are really bad, don't think about the results as much. Think about your own development. Obviously still be a team player, but you just gotta make the most of it. Okay, oops, I, I scrolled down there. Okay, so what, what time do we... Okay, we're going to do a couple more questions that I want to do this thing I have here, and then we will go from there. Did you see the way Eunice played? I actually didn't catch the Europa League final, so if that's what you're talking... I had a... I think I had a game... What did I have? Oh, wait, no, I had a massage during the Europa League final. I'm really bad at scheduling, so I didn't actually see it. I only saw the highlights, so I'm going to take your word for it. Um, so let's see. Could Tottenham be good without Deli Alley? Yes, they could, but Deli Alley is an incredible player. Um, the thing is, Mar Mauricio Pochettino has taken a team um, and has also brought in his own players and made them almost a world class side. They get a top goal scorer, they have a potentially world class player in Deli Alley. In fact, I already think he might be world class. Don't tell anyone, but I think he might be. He's don't. He, I mean, they're, he's scoring a ton of goals, assisting in the best league in the world, arguably. Um, he is won the Young Player of the Year award again. He's got a bright future. Um, if he left, I think you know they they have the ability to put someone else in there, but it would be a massive loss. I don't know if they'd be fighting for the title. If they lost him, they'd have to find someone to put in there that's just as good, which is not easy. Um, because you look at some of the goals he scored and some of the moments he had, it was really important. But they'd still be a very good side without him. They're just a better side with him in there, obviously. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, it's Hashir in the house. Nice. Let's go. Okay, so... Mo asks... Oh, another question for Mo. Okay, well, I'm going to answer Mo's question, and I'm going to get to this thing I have here, um, and then we'll move on. So I went to academy trials, and the coach told me I was very skillful, one of the most skillful, but my left foot, my weak foot was lacking. How do I get better with my weak foot? So I've already... Um, I've already... I've answered this before, but... And to answer your question, Naman, I'm a striker mainly, or attacking center mid, but usually striker. Um, but to answer your question... Um, to work on your weak foot, it's the same way you worked on your dominant foot. You're just not aware of it. When you were younger, you worked on your dominant foot more because you were more comfortable on that side. And if no one like kind of taught you to work on your weak foot, um, you didn't because it just made more sense. It felt more natural to play on your dominant side. But the way you got good at your dominant foot when you were little is you used it over and over and over again. You passed, you took, you controlled, you shot, you did skills with it. That's how you got good at it. And the simple answer to get good with your weak foot is the exact same process. There's no magic like, hmm, I want a better weak foot. Oh, let me, I'll take the, get my weak foot better serum, please. It doesn't work like that. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the training. You got to be consistent. I can tell you how I started getting better with mine. Um, I got better with mine like when I was really young, like seven or eight. Um, not really young then, but when I was a kid, seven or eight, I kind of just realized the need to have a good weak foot. So I just started practicing with it. I started in my practices using it. Now this is when I was seven or eight. Um, if you're like in your teens, I wouldn't suggest you know working on your weaknesses in your team practices, do it in your individual training. But one of the best things I did when I was younger is I kicked against a wall. And I know I've gone over this so many times, but you don't understand how beneficial this will be, especially if you're trying to develop fundamentals on your weak foot. 
Using a wall, I got many repetitions of passes, shots, ball control on my left side. I focused on it. And when I was a teenager, I got my left foot to the point where I could shoot just as well with my left. I was comfortable on my left side. I could do moves on my left side, not because I had the more ability than anyone. My left side wasn't more naturally strong than anyone, or my weak side, I should say. It was just I put in the work to get it better. So the best way I would say is go to a wall, practice your passing, your contact on the ball, your ball control, your dribbling with your weak side. Do it at least as much as your dominant side. If not, do a few more reps on your weaker side each time. And if you do this consistently, you'll start seeing that your weak side is catching up more and more and more. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. And Cleo 99, no. It's never happening. He'll be at Liverpool until he's 42. Maybe not. But... No, not this summer. Not Hopefully not. I will be so heartbroken if Coutinho leaves. I will be, oh man, that would be, that would be the worst. Okay, so there's one thing I want to go over with you guys. Um, um, for you, are uh, Aturk Efandi, I, I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry. How do I become the captain, I'm assuming you're saying? Um, to become a captain, you have to prove leadership skills. You have to prove you're willing to do the things other players are not. You have to lead by example. And even when you do that, sometimes you won't become captain. But you gotta, you gotta show that you want it. Um, you gotta show some initiative. You gotta show um, that you are willing to work hard. You gotta show that you are willing to put your ego aside in order to do what's best for the team. That's a quick, quick little thing for you there. But those are some things. Yeah, Manchester City did sign uh, Bernardo Silva for 43 million pounds. I'm kind of bummed because I was uh, really hoping he might consider working under the clop, um, but he didn't. So, awesome. Okay, uh, I know you haven't made a video about trials, but do you have any in-depth tips? I would say, honestly, all my tips are in there. Don't overthink it. Just use the tips I have in that video. Um, I'll, have to look, um, the K I'll have to look that up because I actually don't know who he is, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, right after this live stream, I'm going to look up a video of... Um, of that and no i have not tried the nike mental app game in their app but i'll have to take a look at that too so guys i want to go over something really quick and we're we are way over time but we're going to do it anyway um and it's something actually if hashir is in the comments i was watching one of a uh, train effectives video and hashir was talking about something if he, i don't know if he's still in the comments um about self-analysis and i just want to kind of give you guys this information as well because i get a lot of questions from players who are asking me things about how to improve in certain areas how to, you know, really fundamental areas or things like shooting, um, how to get good at certain things like ball control and all that. And really um, what he was talking about is exactly how you do it. It's self-analysis. You guys need to constantly be checking in with yourself, reflecting on your games and your practice and using self-analysis to not only identify where you need to get better, but to identify where you're making the mistakes, where you're doing well, what needs some work. This is a lot of the time, like, if you watch, like, when I do a game footage, I always usually mention things I need to work on because when I'm watching those back, I will see things sometimes, or even when I'm thinking of a game back or practice back, I go, actually, I was making this mistake over and over and over again. How can, what practices can I do so that I don't do that in the future? For example, in my last um, game footage video, I mentioned a few things that I was like, okay, I watched this back and there's just, there's a few things I really need to, to, uh, um, to work on. One of them, for example, is holding the ball up during the game. I just noticed my hold up play was atrocious. And for someone who's six foot three, where his team's relying on him to hold it up and to be able to cushion the ball down and do all that, that's not good enough. I noticed that I wasn't winning many headers, something I need to work on. I noticed my movement and my decision making could use some work. So once I identify that, once I analyze myself and realize that those are some weaknesses from my last game, I can then go ahead and make a plan to work on those areas. And you want to be doing the same with yourself. Never be afraid to identify the mistakes that you're making. You learn way more from your mistakes than you ever will from your successes. It's, I know it's such a cliche thing to say, and I know it's such like a common thing, a common thing, successful people, not to say that I am, but like many people I watch who are incredibly successful, they all preach this. Learn from your mistakes. You will learn more from your mistakes. You will grow more from them. But in order to do that, you have to first recognize when you're making them and then have a plan of attack, as I like to call it. So for example, if you're a striker and you notice you're missing a lot of goal scoring opportunities, you need to identify that 
And think of a way you can prevent that. Do you need to work on your finishing over and over again? Are you not getting in the right positions? Whatever it is. So for whatever position you are, I just wanted to like kind of relay that back over to you guys because it's so, so important that you are analyzing yourself. And I think, oh, I thought it just froze. Analyzing your game, analyzing your weaknesses, analyzing your strengths as well and getting better at those even more. Um, because if you are not doing that, you're missing out on all these opportunities to grow. Okay, so that's just my little thing. Um, someone called me Matt. Um, anyway, so uh, that I, I'm... Hashir reminded me of that when I was watching one of the Train Effective videos, which check out that channel if you haven't. Um, it's really, they got a really cool stuff. Um, they have a 100 day challenge where um, they're going for a contract, which is really cool as well. So anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Just a couple announcements. Um, I have a free ebook that's going to be coming out sometime soon. I don't know how soon, but I'm telling you guys because I want to keep myself accountable. So now that I've told you guys, I'm going to freaking do it. I have an ebook that I made a while ago and I was going to sell it, um, but I'm just going to give it away for free. So to make sure you get that, I'm going to send it out to my email list first. Um, if you want to sign up for my email list, go to simplysoccerpro.com um, and then go to the thing that's on that page and it will go. It will actually give you a free training course as well, but later on I'm going to be blasting out a free ebook to all of those. It's going to be a pretty good ebook. Like it's something I originally was going to charge for, but thought, you know what? I'm just going to, I, I just want to give it away for free. So that's one announcement. All right, guys. So, uh, for Cleo 99, yes, absolutely. I don't, I can't right now. I just don't have the resources to do so. Um, but you got a free ebook coming your way. So there you, go, there you go, guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We have been at it for 45 minutes. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, once again, you know, just thank you for all of your support. You know, it's really cool that so many of you are just coming in to join and, you know, hang out with me for a little bit. Um, I always think that that blows me away. It's just so cool that you guys are here asking your questions, just hanging out with me for a little bit. Um, and I want to keep doing this every Friday. So I'll definitely post another Instagram post um, sometime this next week so that we can do another one of these. You can ask questions. I will have a podcast out on the channel tomorrow going over a topic I really, really think is important, so don't miss that. And then from there, we'll, oh, and also, and also, your skills video, the Simply Soccer Community skills video that I mentioned a while ago, I've made it, it's being created, it will be out on the channel on Sunday. It's already been scheduled, it's already been, it's already on the channel, scheduled to come out on Sunday at 5 p.m. All right, guys, so thank you so much um, for tuning in. I will now get up from this chair to turn off the TV, or TV, wow, um, turn off the camera, and then we'll go from there. Thanks again. You guys can stick around in the comments. I'll be in the comments for a little bit if you want, um, but until uh, tomorrow, I'll see you in the podcast. I won't see you, but I'll see you in the next video and in the next live stream. I hope to see you there. All right. Casually walking over here to turn this. There's got to be a better way to turn this off. All right. See you guys.